Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore, and thank you for tuning into my video today. One of the most common questions that I get asked by my Australian expat clients in Singapore is what do I do with my CPF when I go home? Now, for anyone who's not aware, CPF, the Central Provident Fund, is kind of the equivalent of superannuation in Australia. It's the retirement savings schemes for Singapore citizens and permanent residents here. But what do you do if you're a permanent resident or a citizen and planning to leave to Australia, whether to retire or perhaps just to go back and work? And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you today. What do you need to think about? How does it all work? What are some of the factors that you need to consider? So let's dive right in. Now, don't forget to subscribe, but let's get into the CPF. Now, before we get into what you need to consider, it's important to note that there are three different CPF accounts. You have your ordinary account, your special account, which becomes your retirement account when you retire, as the name suggests, and your medical account, which is often used to cover medical insurance or different health claims. Now, what happens with these accounts if you're a PR here, a permanent resident, looking to move back to Australia? Well, effectively, you have two to three key options depending on your age. One, you could elect to revoke your PR, renounce your PR, your permanent residency, and in cash those accounts, take them with you as cash into Australia. Now, what you do with that money then, obviously, is, is at your discretion. You might decide to contribute that to superannuation, subject to limitations. You might decide to buy a house, pay off a mortgage, or just frivolously spend it. It would be your money. It's not locked into a retirement system. But again, you do need to think about your own situation and your own goals here. So that's one option. The second option is you could leave it in the CPF system. You might decide to maintain your permanent residency. Now, obviously you'll need to consider how you're going to maintain that in the long run if you no longer reside in Singapore, but you can in fact keep that CPF there. And of course, the third option is if you're at the age where you've already taken part or elected to take part in the CPF Life Program, the retirement annuity, you may decide to continue to collect that income stream back in Australia. So how do you decide what's actually right for you? Well, let me share with you some tips or some considerations, some different items to think about when you're looking at what to do with your CPF. Now, the first one is your opportunity cost. Now, by this, I mean, is your CPF going to provide a better return compared to what else you could do with that money? Are you looking to pay down a mortgage, to buy a house, to invest in shares, to contribute to superannuation? It's important to look at which you think is more likely to deliver a better rate of return and help you to achieve your financial goals. The second item to consider is the tax implications. Now, if you return to Australia and you're collecting a CPF life retirement annuity or income stream, chances are that money is going to be taxed in Australia because Australia taxes worldwide income subject to the double tax agreements. So you do need to think about this. Likewise, if you keep your money invested in CPF, in the ordinary account, special account and medical account, and that money is growing for you, delivering a rate of return, you may also find that that could be taxable in Australia as well. So very important to factor in the tax implications because you may find that superannuation or some other vehicle back in Australia may be a better option for you. The third important item to consider is what are your plans in relation to Singapore? Now, renouncing your permanent residency here is not a step that should be taken lightly. Naturally, you should be giving some thought to this. Are you planning on returning to Singapore? Are you not? Are you not sure? Because if you do decide to remove your CPF, your funds from your CPF account, then if you decided to return and Singapore granted your pass or permanent residency again in future, you would have to recontribute that money back into your CPF account. So naturally a very important one to think about, particularly if you're looking to buy a house or spend that money on something else that could be quite difficult to liquidate. So again, there's no one size fits all when it comes to your CPF. Think through your options, but just make sure that you're not getting hit with any surprise tax bills just because you didn't think about things early enough. I hope you find these tips helpful. I hope they shed a little bit of light about what to think about when it comes to your CPF and moving back to Australia. 
If you have any questions at all, shoot me a note. I'd be more than happy to discuss this with you. If you have any comments, again, drop them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.